French economist Thomas Piketty made a strong case for national minimum wages during his recent visit to South Africa as a tool to reduce poverty and inequality. Now, according to Piketty, it has proven successful in both developing, developing and emerging economies. Trade union COSATU echoes these sentiments and is demanding one single minimum wage across the board. Uh, joining us uh, in studios in our Cape Town office to discuss the impact of the national minimum wage is Temba Nolutungu, director at the Free Market Foundation. Temba, thanks so much for your time. Uh, it, it sounds like a good idea, but maybe first let's understand how would this be implemented? There are different sectors. Is this feasible? Yeah, first of all, in response to the point that you're raising, if it's going to be within a sector, it's going to be a disaster. If it's going to, we're going to go the national minimum wage route, it's going to be a national disaster. This I based on the fact that there is empirical evidence and also if one considers, you know, rational, objective, unemotional discourse. The route to go is to do away with the national minimum wage, especially if one would considers the fact that we are a developing country, a developing country's economy, by definition, is labor intensive. And so there's a vast pool of labor, of people unemployed out there. And so we need policies that are going to make it easy for people to come into the labor market. Now, the national minimum wage or, or sectoral minimum wage constitutes a barrier to entry for those people who are outside but it's good for those people who are already in the system, who are employed, especially those who are part of organized labor. But for those people who are less experienced, who are who are less skilled and generally those who are less desired, for them they continue to be outsiders because the thing is they are being priced out of the market. And that's the basic problem that we faced with here. And the point is to just simply talk nicely about on an altruistic sort of basis that we need to have a national minimum wage is going to to raise people's living standards, is going to be good for everybody and so on. That does not take into account the big picture. The unemployed people out there, we're talking about over 35% of the unemployed people in this country. That's you know, if you were to combine the populations of Cape Town, Durban, and, and Johannesburg, that gives you an idea in terms of how many people are unemployed. So it's very, very important for us to take cognizance of that and to do away with the national minimum wage, which has proved in other countries to be counterproductive. As a matter of fact, at home here, uh, it's acknowledged by Carmen Lowe, who is the spokesperson, spokeswoman, for the Women on Farms project. She acknowledged that with the implementation of the statutory increase in minimum wage in the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. the agricultural sector in the Western Cape shed 73,000 jobs. 73,000 jobs. Temba, so I hear, you. Temba, I hear you when it comes to yes. the implications for people who are outside the labor market. So let's talk about uh, the implications for the people who are doing the hiring. So for small businesses, what would this mean for them? Okay. Yeah, f first of all, the thing is, even with those who are already employed, who might not be, you know, readily uh, so got rid of as a result of a national minimum wage kicking in, the point is the mere fact that there is serious discussion on the part of the Minister of Labor, Deputy President, and organized labor, which is the labor aristocracy, actually sends out a signal that you have to think in terms of going the capital intensive route as opposed to the labor intensive route. And so even with those people who, are, who don't lose their jobs, this is only just for the time being. And the point is, if you're an employer and you're faced with the prospect of a national minimum wage being implemented, you're going to think right now in terms of investing more in capital, in heavy machines, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That is what is happening. So there's no security for in the long term, or maybe in the medium term, for those people who are already employed. There just isn't. 
Temba, thank you so much uh, for bringing your passion, the explanation of that minimum wage debate that still uh, rages on. Thanks so much for that. We certainly needed a lot more time to get into it. But thanks to uh, Temba Noluchungu, Director at the Free Market Foundation. Do stay with us. When we come back, we'll be talking about gas exploration and uh, what future it may have for South Africa. Stay with us. Thank you.